your computers for now, so I know that you're focusing on the math. And uh, your warm-up will be up in just a second. All right. Four questions today. Now, number one, fill in the blank. What is the opposite of negative 12? Number two, is 60% greater than, less than, or equal to 13 twentieths? Number three, what's the GCF, greatest common factor of 24 and 16? And number four, five and 26 hundredths times eight and four tenths. So I'm going to give you guys until my watch is working. 10, 10, that's eight minutes from now. Eight minutes to work on these four questions. So go ahead and get working on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank 
So two more minutes. Alrighty, let's go ahead and go over these. I know we have some time to play some quizzes today. So, number one, we are filling in the blank. So I'm going to go back over here. So we're filling in the blank. We can see all that, right? Good. What is... Huh? I'm still recording, yeah. What's up? I was going to tell you Yeah. Explain to me. Again, why any number that has the exponent of zero is one? It's a very long and complicated explanation that I don't remember right now. Okay. Uh, well, I'll look it up and we'll, we'll talk at lunch. I looked it up, I just never explain. I'll look it up and maybe I can explain. I know it's like a whole like it's a lot, but yeah. and I feel like we had this conversation last year. Yeah. So then I couldn't remember and my kids were asking me and I was like yeah, I don't remember it off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up and look into it more, too. So when you take an, a number, let's say we take the number 5, and we raise it to the exponent of 0, anytime you raise a number to the exponent of 0, it's always 1, no matter what. It's not 0. It's just 1. No, that's 5 to the second power. Yeah. I don't have an answer. Okay, hang on. S. Thank you. And then um, five to the first power, like you said, if you do five to the first power, yes. No, five to the second power is twenty-five. Five to the first power is when you take five, multiply it once, and you just get five. Anything to the first power is just the same number. I don't even remember. I'd have to look it up. It's a whole like college level math explanation that I don't remember right now. <laughs> so we'd have I'd have to look it up. But anyway, let's do our warm up. Our first one, the opposite of negative twelve. If you're taking a negative and taking the opposite, what does it become? Positive 12. Just 12. There's your answer. Our next one. We are comparing these. We need to figure out if 60% is less than, greater than, or equal to 13 twentieths. How do we tell? I know that 20 times 5 equals 100 for a multiplier of 13 times 5, and I got 65, and 65 is more than 60, so it's less than. So, what basically what he's saying is they need to be the same format. They both need to be percents, they both need to be fractions, one or the other. The easiest way to do this is going to take this one and make it a percent. So, how do I take 13 twentieths and make it a percent? Divide. 13 divided by 20. Does 13 or 20 go into 13? No. Good. So, we need to add a decimal to zero. If I add a decimal here, what do I do? Yeah, the Good. Does 20 go into 130? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many times? Six. Six, which is 120. 
But I'm not completely done. I can keep going. We can add one more zero. Does 20 go into 100? Five times. So this is really 0.65. But to change this decimal to a percent, what do I do? Move it right twice. One, two. So this is 65%. So 60% is what? Less than 13 twentieths. So you had to change your fraction to a percent, then you can compare them. How'd you guys do on that? Good? Bad? All right. Good. Our next one is common factor of 24 and 16. So we need to do 24 and 16. What number? We need to do our factor trees, right? Good. The numbers that multiply to 24, does it matter what you choose? Doesn't matter. I'm going to do um, 6 and 4 because I heard that one. What numbers multiply to 6? 3 times 2. Both of them are prime. What about 4? 2 times 2. Good. What about, so that's done. What about the numbers that multiply to 16? So we can do 2 times 8, 4 times 4. Does it matter? No. Nope. Let's do 2 times 8. Two is prime. What about eight? Two and four. Two times four. What about four? Two and two. Two and two. Okay. So now we need to do our LCM on top, our GCF on bottom. I'm going to list 24 first. So we have a three, a two, a two, and a two. Those are gone. Now we need to do our matchy matchy. Does the two match? Yeah. Yep, we can match our first two. What about our second two? Yeah. Okay. What about another two? Yeah. Yep. Another one? No. No. So where do I put that last one? On the top. On the top. Good. Now it asked for the GCF, so we need to find the GCF. How do I do that with two, two, two? Okay, we need to multiply it. Here times two times two, which I heard everybody say is eight. eight. So three. Jones. Yep. Uh, I didn't see anything uh, because I was in a place where I couldn't catch no internet. So that's okay. So I have to kind of wait. That's all right. Just follow along as good as you can, okay? Alrighty. Our next one, number four, multiplying some decimals. Do I need to line up my decimals? No. no. So we have 5 and 26 hundredths times 8 and 4 tenths. So, got to do a multiplication here. What is 4 times 6? 24. 24. Carry your 2. What is 4 times 2? Plus 2. 10. Carry your 1. What is 4 times 5? 20. Plus 1? 21. Okay. What do I need to put right here? Zero. Good. Always have your placeholder zero. We're multiplying by the second number in. You need to have that placeholder zero to move everything over one place value. Now, what's eight times six? Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Carry four. Now we can do eight times two. Sixteen. Plus four. Twenty. And eight times five. Forty. Forty plus two. 42. Then we can add. What is 4 plus 0? Yeah. 4. 4. 4 times 0 to 0. What's 0 plus 8? 8. 1 plus 0? 1. 1. 2 plus 2? 4. 4. And 4. 4. 4. Good. <laughs> so my answer is 44,100. No? Good. Okay, yes, I hear you. Hang on. So we have to count the number of decimal places behind our number. So we have one, two, three decimal places. Start at the end of your number and move it one, two, three times. So you should get 44 and 184,000 as your answer. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. So we are going to play quizzes now so uh, I will put it up on the board in just a second um, 
Miss Jones, do I have to sit out of this one too? Because I I forgot to download that, and I have not. I only have a little bit of internet. Yeah, if it's not gonna work, that's okay. You can sit it out, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. So we got things to do after this, okay? If you're still there. So we need to um, play quizzes. Um, for those of you, after we do the quizzes, is, 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 we'll do three. We'll do two math ones and one fun one. After we do the quizzes, uh, there will be a, an independent assignment. I think it's eight questions. All of them are order of operations or PEMDAS. That will pop up after we finish those quizzes is, on Google Classroom. So it's not there yet, but it will pop up later. We're going to do the quizzes first. So I'm going to go ahead and...